Yeah. It's very casual, Terry. Are we yes. on? Yes. Like, we're we're on. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Hello. Hey, everybody. David Domke here on the CP3D podcast. August 1st. August 1st. August 1st, 2024. Terry Ann Scott. Hello. Director of the Institute for Common Power at, at Common Power. What is the Institute, Terry? First of all, I love the brick background. We're in our new building exactly. today. So the, the Institute for Common Power is an educational 501c3 branch of Common Power that we started in 2022. And so that was when, it was several months after you and Charles had come to my house and said, hey, we have this idea for an institute <laughs> because what we want to do is make sure that people understand the history behind the work that we're doing why voting and how voting is tied to everything the history of race and racism and voter suppression and the future of voter empowerment and i was wholly interested in developing something <laughs> like that and so so much so that i rendered my resign or gave my resignation for a tenure position that i had at hood college wow in I november know. of 2021 left started the institute that's kind of the old story right the new story is what as a team we have been able to do in the institute okay and i wanted yeah. to devote today's podcast um <clears throat> we're doing our staff we're doing our staff retreat for the next couple of days so we're in our office in pioneer square area of seattle um we have this great great uh main one floor they've been incredibly generous to us mm -hmm. so we're in a, we're in a conference room there and charles is busy with some other meetings um, today, I want to devote the podcast to talking about a specific institute program called Educators for Democracy. Okay, so I want to, that's what I want to talk about, Educators for Democracy, um, because we're going to do an event on Tuesday on Zoom that we're titling uh, No More Moms for Liberty, Time, colon, colon, if we're course, academics, colon, we're going to have a colon. Two okay? spaces, colon, two spaces. <laughs> time, time for Educators for Democracy. So No More Moms for Liberty time for educators for democracy so we're going to do that event on zoom on tuesday evening everybody's invited to it i'll share the registration link when i send out this uh podcast um, and it's going to be part celebration and part fundraising for the for the institute and so i want to talk about that but i think in order to kind of like fully get a sense of what educators for democracy is we've got to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the institute first mm -hmm. um so you're in town from yeah. you don't live here though no, I live in Maryland still. So I used to live here. I lived here for 10 years. I used to teach at the University of Washington, which is how I met Dr. David Domke. We shared students together who were going on David's trips to the South. And when we met, we always like to do as much local flavor as possible. Right. When we met, for the one time we met before you moved to Maryland, we met at the U Village Starbucks. Yep, we <laughs> sat at the U Village Starbucks. We met for coffee and you know started to talk about our backgrounds and one of the first things that you said was uh i wanted to talk to you about being involved in the things that you were doing to the south and i said well that's great but i'm moving to maryland <laughs> exactly so, but let's we figure all, it out we all know <laughs> that you know great relationships and opportunities um have different chapters to them and so eventually we charles douglas and i came and spoke with well first of all we had asked you to be a fellow Yes. For the for the organization, and, and that was like one year of a, of a fellowship while you were still at Hood. Right. I had the honor of being the very first We the People Public Scholar Fellow for Common Power and yeah. started doing some lectures and some teaching in Common Power. And so and I had already known you. That's how I got to know Charles and members of the staff. And then the Institute evolved from there. But you had had the idea for the Institute for well, a while, well, right? We had, we had thrown around this idea of something formal because right. it was... You're off camera. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Terry. Um, because the, it was, I, you know, I was convinced that if the left or the center left or progressives didn't start to create some kind of institutional educational apparatus that was not just universities or, or schools, right. that they were going to be just overrun by the, the kind of tsunami right. of conservatives. It had right? to be accessible. Which yeah. is what we do. We try to make it as accessible as possible to all generations. Exactly. Oh yeah. And you, right. Yeah. And so we talked to you at your at your at your home in Maryland, and uh, you. <clears throat> well, so I mean, why why was this why was this the draw to you? Why was I interested yeah. in it? I had always been, I think, an academic who wanted to do things that were off campus that were not just on campus and in the classroom. And so I had already I had started a program at the University of Washington that connected um, student athletes to kids in the community who were quote unquote 
um, at risk or who had been through the criminal justice system, things like that. And so it was important for me to make education accessible for everybody, not just those who could afford to go to college. And so when you all came and said, we want, we want to reimagine what education means and think about it more broadly. And even though I had always wanted, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but I've always, I had always wanted to be a professor. I had gained tenure. We know how challenging that is. That was an easy thing for me to say, hell yeah, I'm in. Uh, let's go. The other part of that, though, was that in CP and, and you and Charles, any idea that I threw out and I said, well, you know, I'm thinking of this, and you supported it. You guys said, yeah, let, let's make it happen. And so that's one of the things that's beautiful about CP is that we can't dream too big, mm -hmm. ever. And I think the Educators for Democracy exactly. is demonstrative <laughs> of that. Right. So uh, I, some chunk of you know Dr. Terri Ann Scott from her lectures at the Institute from uh, you actually have a couple, you have a lecture coming up on Monday. Monday. Yep, what happens after the 1965 Voting Rights Act. So you have a lecture Monday and the following Monday about what happens after the passage of that incredible piece of legislation. Correct, which T the anniversary is on Tuesday. Right, Tuesday is the anniversary of the passage of that, and that's when we're going to do our Educators for Democracy event. Um, so some people know you through lectures. Some people also know you through the learning tour trips that we do to the South right. together. Right. Um, and so on those trips, you and I take people, organizations, partners, all kinds of folks. Um, in fact, we're you know to the American South, to Atlanta and Alabama, and then sometimes also to Tennessee and Mississippi. Mm -hmm. We're about to do a special new trip. We are. Right? Yeah. With who? Da -da -da -da, the Lakers organization. The Los Angeles Lakers have reached out to us and would like us to lead them on a journey. So their head of DEI reached out to us, and we've made that happen, and we're going in, what, three weeks? Yeah. So just before you get all too excited, it's not the players. Not the players. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the organization. Right. But, right. but it might well be the players at some point. And it demonstrates their commitment to social justice, right. which I think is beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. So we do these trips, and people might know you through those. Um, and you come up with an idea every couple days that is SGU. Okay. <laughs> that is that is some <laughs> like that is something really usually compelling, and, we're, and cool. we try to we try to like, well, how can we do that? Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, um, what 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 is this thing? And I want to walk through it kind of step by step that, right. is, that are Educators for Democracy. So the Educators for Democracy is now an initiative. It is now, I don't even know how, it's a family, it's a community, it's something that we had never imagined. We decided we wanted to take educators on a learning tour. By educators, we mean who? K through 12 educators, largely. Uh, sometimes we have college educators who are in there, but we wanted to do K through 12 educators. And we did the first one in October of 2022. And we paid for everything because we understand that educators are underpaid in this country, particularly K through 12 educators. So we wanted to make sure that they had access to going on the journey. And we thought, oh, let's try it, let's see how it goes. And I just wrote about this in the, in the newsletter, I will never forget the second day into the journey. And we are sitting there in the Legacy Museum hallway and both of us at the same time <laughs> said, this has to be something we keep doing because the educators came so interested in this so 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 thirsty for the knowledge but also on the first stage you remember two of them came to us and said we now know that this is our purpose oh yeah yeah we know that this is our purpose and that was everything and so since then we have made sure to do all that we can to support educators and then it has just blossomed and grown into not them just going back into their communities and teaching truthful history it has turned into them creating new programming changing how they talk about things to their community, telling us that they have courage to teach now, going into the fields and knocking on doors. Fully a third of our educators have now knocked on doors or are scheduled to knock on doors in the fall. With us. With us. Um, and when we started that first year, it was largely a partnership with the Frederick Maryland School District, right? That's right, because they had um, contracted me to create an African-American studies program. Mm. And so I developed a relationship with them doing that, and then I had trained about 40 students, 40 educators, that summer before we went on the journey to be a part of being able to teach that in Frederick County Schools. And that's actually where my children, I have three kids, the twins graduated from the high school. I have one, my youngest, who is going into one of the high schools there. And so I also had this kind of personal investment in thinking about educating those educators. And it was actually in that summer doing that that I realized the immense power and, and beauty of educating educators. Because not only are they teaching us things all the time, but we know that for each educator we take on a journey, we are able to impart some of our knowledge, some of our experiences to, 
it is exponential in what they can do with that and the numbers of, of students that they reach in the community power that they have. So we, we just, uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, um, we're gonna uh, send out on our Common Power newsletter a report that is about Educators for Democracy, about that particular program. And it's a beautiful report uh, headed up by Jordan Schulte, who works in development mm -hmm. uh, with us. And it's, it shows just all of the kind of like numbers and the, fl the flow of people in, the impact they have, and some of the grants that we provide to them subsequent, yes. right? Yeah. I, know you're, I know you're buzzing, you're like, I I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. So what is it, Educators for Democracy, you asked me to define it and I've gone around it. When they go on the journey with us and they apply, we have an open application right now, we get far more applicants than we can take on a particular journey, which is always painful to have to turn people away. When they go on the Truth and Purpose Learning Experience, they become Institute Educator Ambassadors. And as Institute Educator Ambassadors, then they are able to walk into our programming that is Educators for Democracy, that includes a number of initiatives that we have. They'll all be outlined in that report. Yeah. You know what? I think that when I send this podcast out, I'm gonna, I already said that I'm gonna send out the link to the Tuesday event. Oh, send the I'm gonna send a report Send the too. report, yeah. yes, perfect. Yeah. So, so the way someone becomes an educator for democracy with common power is they have to go on this learning tour trip with us. To Georgia and Alabama. And then, and they apply for that, we fully fund everything, and then once they go on that journey, then as an ambassador, they become part of this Educators for Democracy program. Okay, and we fully fund, we pay for airfare, yep. lodging, uh, mm -hmm. food, hope, yeah, everything. Museum entry, everything. They could theoretically go on the journey without any money and be fine. And, and you know, many Common Power supporters, but certainly not all, live in the Seattle-ish area. And you might have a, a belief that that school districts and schools would be quick to say, yeah, we really want you to go on these trips to a teacher. But we actually find out that it can be very difficult for them to even get time to come. Most of them, we were lucky in that Frederick County Schools in Maryland took a chance on us and said, yeah, we'll send those individuals, we'll give them all time so that it doesn't eat into their time off. Now we have had educators come from almost 30 states and three countries mm. and the narrative that we hear from them is it is very challenging for them to get the time off to the point where we have told them that if you can't get the time off, let your school district know that we'll cover the cost of your substitute yeah, for right. those days. And some of them have said, yeah, I, I'm going to let you know about that because I might need you to do that. Yeah. So we've done, are we, we've done three trips so far. Five. Five. <laughs> <They> did. <laughs> Five trips. Okay. So then <laughs> October, 2022, yep. then there was February. 2023. 23. May, 2023. September 2023, Three. we went to Tennessee and Mississippi. Right. Oh my gosh, it might be more than five. And then came back February 2024. Right. And that was the last That's one. Five. That's and we, five. And we got one coming up in September. September, and then another one in February. Right. Yeah. So on every one of these trips, it's about 30-ish yeah. teachers who come, right? Yeah. Uh, and then there's leadership for Common Power, plus some of our foot soldiers who we work with. And educators who come back from previous journeys oh, yeah. to be mentors. Yes. Yeah. So it, the bus gets to be about 40 people at that point, which is about the size of the bus. Um, and we do these trips. And so across five trips, one of those was an advanced trip for people. So there's four kind of entry level trips. We're now at about, once we get through this trip in September, how many? 132 educators. Now, and we have, and you will see this in the report because not only do we know that we have a grant program now called Education to Action Grant where they apply for grants and they can institute different change like education action programming in their community. We've had a number of them do that. Uh, they become family. We get pictures in the WhatsApp all the time of them visiting each other, having reunions. Um, they are able to go on a symposium that we just had in Selma, Alabama at our building in Selma, Alabama. And it was like part history exploration, part pedagogy. And they left that where all people from different cohorts came together and created a new community. Um, and I forgot the last thing I was going to say because I got so excited about those <laughs> initiatives. What was your initial, where was that headed? I was just asking you how many people were. That's all you asked me. Yeah. And that's what I was doing. Okay. Oh, the students. Okay. 132 educators in our Educator for Democracy. We estimated that each one of them on any given year has an average of 100 students. That means some may have 40, some may have 130. So that's how we kind of did our survey. And so think about that. 132 teachers in one year 
have over thirteen thousand students and then the next year you add to that as we add so we're talking about tens of thousands of students across the country that we are able to help impact yeah now it started with maryland but now they're all over the place as you're saying they're everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. coast to coast and haiti and canada and we don't really know how they're they're because they have to apply we they tell us don't they like, yeah we ask now we ask we didn't used to because we're like how are they all finding out about us yeah. so a lot of it is word of mouth they find out on twitter and social media we and our team we send out a blast to administrators and teacher unions and things and they get forwarded those emails to them a lot of you and our cp community tell people about these so there is no one we they find out about it from all over the place they come to us from all kinds of places yeah okay so when they come through the learning tour, which we call the truth and purpose learning experience for teachers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because we're committed to the teaching of truth and also we want them to further affirm or find their purpose. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully stated. Um, they then become part of this cohort uh, that we call <coughs> Educators for Democracy. That's right. And they get access, as you've already kind of rattled off, several different things and possibilities. And they teach. I forgot about they that. They teach in our institute as well, yeah. right? In yeah. fact, on the Tuesday event, there'll be a couple folks there that will do a little bit of teaching. Right. They don't know that yet. No. But then, <laughs> they're gonna, You'll we'll, find out soon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Probably looking at you, Ivory, and Shernita, yeah. yeah. and Carmen. And, we see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they begin to then also just hang out together right yes. they are family they send their each other so we have a whatsapp and any of you who've gone on learning tours will know this we don't close them so not only do they maintain connections in the whatsapp but you know they have their own email threads it's like a text thread it's a text it's chain. A te yeah and so we will just a few days ago i saw pictures of one of our educators in dc hanging out with the other educators they send pictures uh, of each other's uh, nieces and kids they, they become strong friendships. They go out and they visit each other and they're not going to visit each other because they happen to be in that city for something else. They're going out of their way to come back together. It is, I remember when a number of them came here and I wasn't able to come to uh, Seattle, but they posted videos of reuniting and it, it made me cry. Yeah. Watch, you were there. Yeah. Everybody hugging, it's, it is so, it is nothing we imagined that would have happened. And it's one of my favorite things that we do. So we're always a political organization that education, we want to drive it towards certain action, mm -hmm. as the phrase goes that you created, education to action. Um, so we want that to be the case. So now you have this, this body of educators, 130-ish after the September trip. 132. 132. <laughs> and they're gonna, they, they are there and they just went to this, this, five-day symposium, this conference in Selma, Alabama, that you and the NAACP and professors from different universities were all leading, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Equal Justice Initiative. It was incredible.